Hey guys, I bought the Pico Gus, so let's check it out. The Pico Gus is a new ISA sound card. It uses a Raspberry Pi Pico to emulate the legendary Gravis Ultrasound, also called Gus. Now the Gravis Ultrasound launched in 1992 and what made it so special is the use of sample-based music synthesis. Instead of using FM synthesis, found in most other sound cards. Samples are basically real-world sound recordings that could be loaded into the memory of the GUS and then played back for more realistic music and sound effects. Here we have the G-List, a document created by Mark. It has a huge list of all the supported games for the GUS. The Gravis Ultrasound was also very popular with the demo scene an international computer art subculture that focused on producing demos, which are digital presentations that sort of show off skills in programming, visual art and music. And these demos were shared at festivals known as demo parties. The sample-based nature of the Graphics Ultrasound also made it popular with music trackers. Music trackers, they were already very popular from the Amiga, the Gravis Ultrasound took tracker music to a new level with higher sounding quality, more voices and hardware mixing that offloaded the processing away from the CPU. The Gravis Ultrasound has achieved cult status with a very loyal fan base. Prices are extremely high and finding one is also very difficult. This is where the Pico Gus comes in. It's only 45 US dollars. While this card is compatible with the Gravis Ultrasound, it can do a lot more. It's basically a mini processor on an ISA card that can be turned into all sorts of things. The project is really well documented. This is the configuring and using your Pico Gus page. And very interesting here on the right side are all the features that are supported. So yes, it is supporting the Gus, but also AdLib, as well as a MIDI interface. We can use it as a Tandy 3 voice or a CMS Game Blaster. And it has a USB port at the back, which we can use as a joystick or game port. This is the main project website of the Pico Gus, and it has all the links to all the resources. And this project is developed by Ian Scott. I'm always interested and fascinated how people get involved in such projects. So I can recommend this video to you on the Polymat YouTube channel, an amazing interview with Ian Scott. I tried to buy one when it first launched, but I missed out. And thanks to one of my patrons, he reached out to Ian, who then reached out to me and put one aside for me. In the box was the card, a sticker, and a MIDI adapter cable. This plugs into here and then you can connect an external MIDI device like a Roland Sound Canvas or Roland MT32. Here we have the card, so let's check it out. Wavetable header is at the top. Some jumpers here to configure resources. By default, it uses Interrupt 5 and DMA1. And then here at the back, we have a USB port to connect a gamepad. More on that later. And then here, two plugs. This is the audio out. And here, as mentioned earlier, the adapter to connect external MIDI devices. Here we see the Raspberry Pi chip and there's a little button here as well as an internal USB port. I guess this is for programming the device without plugging it into a computer, doing it externally. And here we have a little activity LED. Here we are on the retro PC and we need a bunch of resources. Firstly, the ultrasound directory. It's a zip file, just unpack it onto your drive. Then the Pico Gus that contains the different firmware versions and a program to upload the firmware. And if you're interested in the Tandy 3 voice emulation, we need a little driver. To use the card, we need to go into the Pico Gus folder. Let's have a look. These batch files at the top, I've created them myself to make uh, switching between the different modes a little bit easier. I will make them available. 
The UF2 files, these are the different firmware files. So there's one for Adlib, one for the CMS Game Blaster, one for the GUS, one for the game port if you want a dedicated game port. We've got one for the MPU MIDI interface and one for the free voice Tandy emulation. And then the PGUS init utility lets you upload these different firmware files. So as an example, let's go PGUS init slash F for flashing the firmware. Let's say we go for adlib. So it's PG dash adlib dot UF2. Press enter and off it goes uploading the firmware. And this is where my batch files come in handy. For example, if we look at the adlib batch file, it just types this command. So I can just type adlib and get the same result, just making it a little bit easier. To configure the GUS, it's a little bit more involved. We have these two lines here to set some environment variables to configure the resources and the ultrasound folder. This line here flashes the GUS firmware and then I've got a final initialization just to make sure everything works. So let's run that one and we can see here it's flashing the firmware and then initializing the card, confirming everything. Here we have some game recordings on the Pico GUS. These are a bunch of games that have native support for the Gravis ultrasound. If you're stuck or you're trying to do something special, you can run the command with the slash question mark and it will show you some of the other options. The PGAS init utility has a special command slash J which enables the joystick support. So let's say you wanna have the K 
card working in Adlib mode. First you're flashing the firmware and then we're running the uh, pgas init command with the slash j flag and you can see here USB joystick support enabled. You might be wondering why is there a dedicated firmware for the joystick game port? Well, this is in situations where you using another sound card and you are limited with resources and you just want the Pico Gas to be a dedicated game port, not using any other resources. I loaded the Adlib firmware, so let's check out a few games. Let's test the MPU MIDI port. So first we're gonna test the wavetable header. I've got the Dream Blaster X2. So all you have to do is plug it into the wavetable header like that. And yeah, let's check out a few games. If you have a Sound Blaster 16 that has the famous hanging MIDI note bug, then yeah, good news. Using the Pico Gus as a dedicated MIDI interface solves that issue. When using as a MIDI interface, it is compatible with the intelligent mode. That means you can use it with a Roland MT32. So in this case, we need the adapter, plug it into here to get the MIDI port on this side. And then we need a MIDI cable, plug it into here. That goes into the MIDI in on the Roland MT32. And then you just need some cables and connect this to your speaker. I have captured a few games to make sure this works. And yes, it does.
I flashed the CMS Game Blaster firmware and recorded a few games. The Tandy 3 voice mode, well, there's a lot more going on with this one. We need to flash this firmware and then we also need a DOS driver. The project is here. It's created by Jan. And if we scroll down here, there's a bit of information. It basically redirects some ports. This project has been used with Matze 79's TNDY project as well as the parallel port Tandy device from Serdaco and it works also with the Pico Gas. We also need to patch the games. There's a thread here on Vogons with a link to an FTP server. Here's the FTP server. If we click on the Tandy sound patches and games, there are a list of some game developers. And let's say we wanna patch one of these games. We dig in deeper and then we find an executable that you uh, use to launch the game. If you want to use the USB port to play with a controller under DOS, these are supported. We've got the Xbox 360 style Xingput controllers as well as the Sony DualShock 4. Now I don't have the wired Xbox controller, so I reached out to Ian and he cooked up a better firmware version, which supports the wireless version of the PC Xbox 360 controller and look at that this works beautifully so I can calibrate my joystick just fine and then yeah let's try out this game and here we are in the game with the d-pad I can control the car I have two buttons A and B for braking and accelerating so what sort of system should you use well there are many choices the first GAS launched in 1992 and that was a time where most had a 386 computer but there were many revisions of the Graphics Ultrasound even models launching as late as 1996. So that's four years of computer hardware and that's a long time. The performance at that time exploded year by year going from a 386 in 1992 to probably a fast Pentium around 1996. These are the two systems I used for testing. The slot one with the Intel 440BX chipset and an ATI Radeon, and then something a little bit more compatible, a SuperSocket 7 platform with an Acer chipset and an S3 Verge graphics card. This machine was a little bit too fast. Some of the games didn't work, but that had nothing to do with the gas. It's because this machine is too fast and many of the games are speed sensitive. So when I switched over to the SuperSocket 7 machine, I could disable the CPU cache, uh, reduce the clock speed, and then a few of the tricky games that are speed sensitive would start to work. 
So you want to make sure to check your compatibility of the main board. There is a compatibility list here and it shows various motherboards with the chipsets and it has some notes here. What stood out to me is, well, slot one with the 440px chipset works flawlessly as well as Super Socket 7 with the Acer chipset. However, the wire chipset is not compatible, but this also happens with a real gas. So that just shows you how good the emulation is. And yeah, this is a document you definitely should check before getting the card to make sure there are no surprises. There's also a list of uh, demos to see if there are any issues or any notes, how you can get them to work. For example, here you can change uh, one of the features when initializing your card. We have some notes for trackers, music players, games of course, and also utilities. This project is open source. So if you want to build your own PicoGas, you can do that. It's got all the resources needed to make your own PCB as well as ordering your components. But then you need to, yeah, do some soldering. And this is not straightforward, but if you have the skills and the patience, this is something you can check out. So guys, what is my opinion on the Pico Gas? Well, it gets a huge thumbs up. For 45 US dollars, you can't go wrong. And what I really like most about the card is not only the compatibility with the Gravis Ultrasound, but the flexibility. Uh, there are so many different sound cards you can emulate with this card. Just flash a different firmware and off you go. In the future, maybe we see even more options being supported. I have a sneak peek for you. This is unreleased yet. It's a prototype firmware of the Sound Blaster. That means we have FM music as well as digital sound effects. The flexibility extends to the retro PC. This sound card, well, it's at home in a 386, but also in a faster Pentium or a Pentium 2. So there is a wide range of games that you can play with this card. So games like Epic Pinball on a 386, they will work beautifully, but you can also use it as a MIDI interface with a Roland MT32, play some classic Sierra games. But yeah, if we go a little bit forward, 1996, let's say you have an early Pentium with a general MIDI wavetable board, this card will also be extremely uh, versatile. In combination with a Sound Blaster 16, it solves the hanging MIDI note bug. So yeah, many situations and many, many games you can enjoy with this card. So yeah, I'm excited. Ian, well done to this project. This is one fantastic contribution to the retro PC community. And now I wanna hear from you guys. Leave your comments down below. What is your take on the Gravis Ultrasound? And what do you think about the Pico Gas? And as always, lots of resources down below in the video description where you can buy this card, but also all the firmware drivers and so on. And that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.